Ain't Slayed Nobody is a Call of Cthulhu podcast with violent themes and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Howdy and welcome to another episode of Ain't Slayed Nobody. We're playing Call of Cthulhu by Chaosium Inc. And before we begin, I'd like to thank Graham Plowman for the music we use in our first scene. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Thanks to Cody Fry for Dead Man Walking, our theme song, and all of the artists who created royalty-free music or sound effects that we used in the episode. In two weeks on June 23rd, we're going to release the first part of our special Cthulhu Dark session with Scott Dorward. That's going to be awesome. That will hit our regular podcast feed. Support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash ain't slayed. Get yourself some free stickers. Hell, tell someone new about the show this month. Go all out. We have Alex McDaniel, Chuck, Brandon Wainerdy, Wes Davis, and Jay Arnold in tonight's episode, along with Will Bazer, our deputy keeper. I am Cuppy Cup, your keeper of arcane lore. Thank you and good luck out there. Previously on Ain't Slayed Nobody. The party failed to awake Sheriff Bishop. Uh, I guess I'd use a rag or a shirt to plug the wound. I don't know. And crossed a dangerous boneyard. Yeah, let's let's camp near the giant bone pile, (laughs) Professor Dipshit. They discovered an ancient painting. And people used to worship something that looks like this, and we called it Goat Man. Before Johnny blew up a mess of ghouls. Enjoy your Molotov fucktail, dickbags. And the gang, they found what might be an exit. This is the exit. But how are you going to get out with Ellie? Oh, God. Shall we ride? Silver light pours from the opening in the cave ceiling and cascades downward, reflecting off the mineral like 10,000 eyes in the wall. Streaking across the water, this moonlight gives the illusion of a pathway, a white bridge suspended in a void that shatters when Johnny tosses a stone into the pool. Past the water's edge in front of you, There is only water. It spans the entire length of this chamber, lapping gently against the wall on the opposite side. Would you like to ford the river? Can we turn the uh, bone stretcher into some sort of canoe? (laughs) How how watertight did we make it? I like your creativity. You're going to need that in here. Professor Wilkinson carried Ellie out of that last chamber with a fireman's carry, you might recall. So you will have to make a long hike back there if you want to try something with the bone stretcher. That's fine, and maybe all of the ghouls are dead, but it's not convenient. I reckon I'm going to tie a rope around my pickaxe and see if we can't hook it. And wing it up there and see if it sticks. Like a grappling hook. Yeah, why not? Like a like the... the the Batman thing, the bat claw or whatever the shit. Just to clarify, what is it that you're trying to hook with the pickaxe? The opening. (laughs) 
this is going to be quite a toss. You need to somehow cover about 30 feet laterally across the water and 15 feet up to the ceiling to get to that opening. But you can't arc this throw at all or it will hit the ceiling. So the pickaxe needs to be traveling upward when it reaches the opening and it needs to catch securely on some of those jagged rocks jutting from the mouth. It's very difficult what you're proposing to do. I'm going to try it anyway. I mean, you've got a rope on the end of your pickaxe. You'll get it back. Lance is going to hold the other end of the rope while Jeremiah throws the pickaxe. All right, so reckon I'm going to try and try and get us hooked up to where we can pull ourselves up there. Um, so I'm going to throw it. I'm going to, I'm going to throw my pickaxe and hook it in. We're going to go climb this thing. We're going to all get the hell out of here. I'm happy to let you try this, but you are going to need an extreme success on a throw roll <laughs> to pull this off. All right. You can always push it, so. Yeah, maybe you can push it and luck it and, <laughs> and lose your pickaxe forever. I rolled a 23. Ooh. And I've got 32 luck. <laughs> Jeremiah's throw number is 20, so you need one-fifth of that for extreme success, which is a four. You rolled 23, Wes, so you would need to spend 19 luck to make this happen, and that would take you all the way down to 13. Uh, and, and, and yes, burn my luck. <laughs> Before you make the decision, that nope. is a whole lot of luck. Made it. Made the decision. You're sure you want to do this? Yes. <laughs> okay. Describe this perfect throw for us. Yeah, um, I whipped it around real good and then aimed it up at the door, threw it, and it hooked real good, and I'm yanking on it. Now I'm going to pull myself across the water and up. Hey, hey hold up there, Jeremiah. What if, instead of pulling ourselves across the water, what if we just anchor the other end of this rope? Down here, we got a nice tight line. We just climb up the rope. Oh, yeah. As I recall, Professor, I believe you brought, we brought us a mess of pitons, and we could just hammer a couple of them into the rock and get it nice and secure on this end. We got, we're in business. Let's do it. I like that idea. Yeah, no, we, we could definitely use the pitons. Boys. Let's secure this rope here to the wall with some pitons. So now the rope is anchored to the wall nearest you and the opening, and it looks kind of like a zip line running across the center of this chamber. And to do this, I'm going to let you use a climb or dexterity check, whichever is higher for you. Who is going first? I'll go first. Okay, Wes, give me a dexterity check for Jeremiah. Roll to 38. Now, Jeremiah, you're going to want to climb the rope by hanging upside down like a sloth, with your hands gripping the rope above and your feet crossed over the rope. Yeah. And Jeremiah, you succeeded, so you do scooch along this rope until you reach your pickaxe. And seeing it up close, you really can't believe just how lucky that throw really was. And now you look up toward the light source, toward the moon, and you realize that this is going to be quite a climb to get out of here, more than 40 feet. And since you're the first one attempting this, there's no one to assist you from above, from outside the hole. So you're going to be relying on your minor climbing experience. Can we can we say before this that we gave Wes a long pile of rope? Yeah, I assume that we tied some rope around his waist to take up there to help the rest of us out of here. Yep, we sure did. <laughs> I've got, I, I always have rope. And, uh, and a mess of those pitons. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And a kiss on the cheek. A blessing from the father. <laughs> All right, give me the first dexterity check for Jeremiah for this part of the climb. Roll to 54. Out of 60. Woo. You are climbing. All right, I take a piton, I jab it in, pull up, jab it in, pull up, and then use my feet on the piton every time, and I'm threading the rope through as I climb. 
Give me uh, another dex check to cover the next stretch. 29. All right, you can see the exit from these caves very clearly now. It's maybe four feet in diameter, and you can smell that fresh nighttime mountain air. But give it one final push. I need one more dexterity check. 73. (laughs) I feel like they're playing the yodel game on Price is Right. Uh (laughs) You got to push the roll. Push luck or struggle. I'm going to push that roll. You're having trouble with your grip. The dirt is looser here. What are you going to do differently? Okay. I'm slipping, so I'm going to try and, like, catch my foot against the wall and give myself a little push-up to grab. 35. All right, you've done it. You are the first survivor, Jeremiah, of the cave system. You emerge in an area with shallow vegetation, uh, a few small trees, and scattered boulders here and there. Breathing in this open air feels really good, but now you have to figure out how to help evacuate the rest of your party, which includes a mostly dead sheriff. All right, I'm up here and it's real nice. You guys should do it. How are we getting Ellie up? So we should get two more people up there and then have those three pull Ellie out. Yeah. Uh, Johnny says, uh, I'll go up next. I'll, I'll get up there and somebody can follow up and we'll haul and miss, miss Ellie up. Of course, Chuck has failed every strength roll for Johnny so far. He's due. W- right. But also importantly, Johnny is Johnny is urgently trying to be the next person. Out there. <laughs> Let's let's be clear. Uh, Jeremiah, have you done anything with the rope that we tied around your waist? Um, I'm going to I'm going to throw throw an end of the rope down to you. And where is the other end of that rope? I, I'll tie it to my waist. And no cup said there are rocks tied to a rock. Is there a, is there a rock where I can tie it? Yep. There's one rock in particular that looks good to you as a potential anchor nearby. I look around and find the most secure anchored thing and uh, tie the rope around to it and then throw the end down. So Johnny's going to start climbing up. For the length of rope from uh, the ground to the shaft, give me a dexterity check. (laughs) Is it 100? Uh, It's a 79 out of 70. I'm going to burn some luck. Yes. Okay. So I'm now down to 46 luck. Mm -hmm. Johnny, you climb the horizontal rope, much like Jeremiah did on the underside with your back facing the water. But your strength becomes a problem and your right arm really starts to get tight. But luckily that does go away and you are able to make it to the opening where you see Jeremiah's rope hanging down. And his rope intersects and drops just a few feet below the end of the horizontal rope you just climbed at like an obtuse angle. So it's a doable, but not an easy transition. Okay. Okay, Chuck, let's start Johnny's vertical climb. Give me a dexterity roll and let me know what this looks like. So starting off, it's kind of in like a you know, reverse repelling. I've got my feet against the the wall and I've got my hands on the rope and I'm sort of walking myself up. What about those pitons Jeremiah left? Well, I'm kind of using them as footholds and I've still got my hands on the rope. OK, good. And that's a 33 hard success. This method worked really well for Johnny. You walk up the walls with ease and Johnny was very good at climbing rope in gym class and feels a rush of relief as he sees Jeremiah at the top. Since you did lose a mess of hit points down there for Johnny. I did. I'm still not feeling great. We have not attended to my wounds at all. Yeah, that's a shame. But you do have an unconscious person in the party. Speaking of whom, what are you going to do with Ellie? So, well, if we can just pick her, just pull her up, she'll, she might swing across the water and smash into the other wall. Yes. But 
It'll be fine. We'll just wrap her in some padding or something. <laughs> bubble wrap. <laughs> bubble wrap her. We brought bubble wrap. So Lance grabs the helmet from Wilkerson and puts it on Ellie's head. <laughs> <laughs> so to protect her noggin. All right, I'm tying the longest length of rope we have around Ellie like a life light, so it's very secure. And then I'm leaving the cave with the other end of that rope. Okay, even with uh, your rope skill not being very good, with Professor Wilkinson's help, you are able to tie the rope around Ellie's waist. But instead of giving you an infinite amount of rope, although I don't think it's uncommon for climbers to have ropes that are 100 feet in length, give me a luck roll to see if you still have rope long enough to do what I think you're trying to do with Ellie here. Uh, Father. 27. Good. You do have enough rope, you think, to pull this off. Now give me a dexterity check to see how you do on this horizontal stretch of rope that leads up to Jeremiah's pickaxe and the opening. My first dex roll is 42. Which is a success? Which is, I have a 52 dex. Okay, so you've made it to uh, the opening to this exit shaft. And there are, there's rope and pitons all the way up. So I'm just going to need one dex roll from you. 35. That's a success as well. So Father Flint, yep, not being a, a terribly agile man, you still are able to climb out of this exit shaft using the rope and pitons that were left behind by Jeremiah. And you emerge and greet Jeremiah and Johnny at the top. All right, um, guys, I before I climbed up, I tied a rope to myself that is also attached to Ellie down below. We should be able to pull her pretty easily just based on the three of us. So should we try it? All right. So I think we ought to try and haul up Ellie. Let's do it. I think I think uh, Professor Wilkinson to, to make sure that Ellie isn't um, going to smash into the wall is going to um, climb the other wall without rope, kind of sacrificing himself at this point. Not not, not completely sacrifice, but make sure, you know, like, if I fall, I'm going to get hurt a lot. But I'm a, I'm a decent climber, and and um, I'm going to make sure that, that Ellie gets out of here alive. Okay, so Wilkinson is going to free climb all the way around the side to be a cushion for Ellie? Kind of, yes. This is a pure climb. Uh, Dexterity's not going to cut it, so I need Mm -hmm. a climb roll for this from Wilkinson. Sixty-nine. I am a fifty-two at climbing. I'm going to push. Use the luck. All right. Well, um, I will. I will definitely. Um, do I need a hard success or just a success? Just a regular success. I'll. I can deal with that. Yeah. Um. I. I will use luck. Yeah. So as you're climbing this wall, you're using a piton to kind of help you get a grip on some of the tricky parts, and the piton slips. Luckily, I catch myself before I, I fall. The professor is on the other side of the water and he anchored himself there to the best of his ability. And now he awaits the Ellie maneuver to help help Ellie Ellie through the through the the shaft. It's only Lance and Ellie back where y'all started in the chamber. And Lance, as you start to prepare to guide Ellie off of the rock here, you smell something strange. It's different than the the musty smell that's persisted in this room. It's like a smoldering fire. And just then, a ghoul comes crashing through the waterfall with a short sword. And maybe it was waiting there the whole time for better odds. But this ghoul is absolutely disgusting. There is blood everywhere. Shrapnel from Johnny's canteen is sticking out of its skull and smoke is still coming off of whatever flesh it has left. Jay, this ghoul is pretty badly wounded, and 
this is just going to be you versus the ghoul. I don't think there's time for Wilkinson to come back or anything like that. Uh, the ghoul is making a furious attack, uh, leaping at Lance, but it did have to cover some ground to get to you. So you saw it in time to react. Is Lance fighting back or dodging? Yeah, so I'm uh, 100% fighting back with the broadsword, which will obviously have a longer reach than the short sword. Give me a fight and brawl roll, Jay. Fuck him up, Jay. I got an 89. That's a big fail. Okay, I failed too, so double fail. Lance successfully deflects the short sword of the ghoul and the metal clangs without either one of you taking a hit. You're kind of circling each other in a standoff now. Lance, you can see that this creature is seething mad. It is nearly dead, just persisting on anger and maybe hunger. What do you want to do? Lance is going to swing the sword at its head. Hell yeah, he is. Give me another fight and brawl. (laughs) I got a seven. Damn. You don't even need to roll for damage at this point. Lance, you swung the sword at the creature's head and nearly chopped the top half of the head clean off. It's barely hanging on. You've left just a a hinge of bone there and it's blood, which is now everywhere, smells awful. This creature is done attacking forever. (laughs) Let's get her out of there. Let's do it. All right. So Lance is guiding Ellie until she gets over the water. So he's got one hand on her and then one hand on his miracle badass sword. Uh, Why don't all three of you, uh, Jeremiah, Flint and Johnny, give me strength checks, but do it one at a time. I am known for my strength rolls. I am old, but I am wiry. I rolled a 31. Okay, good. Jeremiah, you... Keep Ellie off of the rock floor as Lance guides her over the water. And you're trying to get some momentum here, but she is moving across the water now. Father Flint, what's your strength roll? Okay, I rolled a uh, 93, so that's good. Yikes. The angle, Father, is just too sharp and you're losing control of the rope. It's slipping through your hands and Ellie is in the water now. Jeremiah, you're trying to stabilize, but it feels like something in the water might be pulling Ellie down. How is that possible? She's drowning. Guys, she's drowning. Johnny, what is your strength result? Johnny rolled a five. Johnny five. Is alive. Yes. Johnny's first strength success ever. <laughs> Johnny's first success is an extreme success. Told you you were due. Johnny like flexes like the Hulk and like his shirt sleeves rip a little bit. And then he just grabs that rope and gets to pull in. Yes. And Father Flint, who's useless, slips and starts to fall into the hole. And Johnny, you reach out and save him while you're pulling Ellie. (laughs) What with one hand while holding the rope with the other. (laughs) Doing the cliffhanger. (laughs) Don't look down. (laughs) So with a massive burst of strength, Johnny literally single handedly gets Ellie up and out of that water. All three men manage to find their footing again and get Ellie higher out of that water, but she does collide with the professor and dings her head on the wall. But fortunately, she's wearing that conquistador helmet. To to cushion the blow uh, before she hits the wall, I I will kind of swing to use use my body to uh, cushion the blow. Professor Wilkinson, you do dampen the impact considerably, and thankfully you're able to center Ellie with the opening before the group outside the cave makes their last pulls. Ellie's just kind of um, dangling there at a dead stop now. And Professor, you did manage to maintain your footing through all of this. Now I need the boys to give me one more strength check. Let's do a group check to raise Ellie out of the cave. 
25. I forget what my strength is. That's enough. Great. Johnny's first pull gets Ellie about halfway up the shaft here. Jeremiah? And it's 73. Jeremiah is worn down after that first effort and barely moves Ellie at all. He actually knocks her head into that wall again, but again, the helmet is is the savior here. Flint? I got 20. Nice. Okay, that's going to do it. You all have successfully raised Ellie from the dead. <laughs> She's unconscious, but seems to be out of harm's way for the moment. Johnny, first successes with strength in a in a big spot. Um, you're the MVP of the cave, I think. <laughs> Good job. It's Johnny Cthulhu. <laughs> okay, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Jay, give me the first dexterity roll for Lance. It's a uh, 44. Okay, that is enough. Lance made it across the first length of rope and sees Wilkinson. Just kind of waiting there. I mean, he's going to let Lance go first and then scramble up after him. Okay, Jay, I need another dex roll for Lance. 33. Lovely. Lance, you start up the rope and you're going to make it out using the rope and pitons. And Wilkinson, as Lance starts to get close to the top, you, you're following behind and you notice uh, something terrifying that ghouls actually seem to be coming out of the walls. There might be a half dozen of them that you can see now. Uh, give me a dexterity roll to see if you can get a move on and get out of here. Uh, I rip I rip Jeremiah's pickaxe from the wall before climbing into that opening. 87. Okay, that's a failure. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to do? Push the roll. Push the roll. As as he's climbing up, I have my knife out and I look at the rope and then I look at Lance and kind of go, eh? <laughs> I, I'll push it. Why not? <sighs> 66. Oh my God. Professor Wilkinson has 65 decks but you can't use luck on a pushed roll. Um, <laughs> ah, so close. <laughs> R.I.P. the NPC. All right, well, I make a leaping grab for the top of the the hole, trying to trying to escape these ghouls. Top of the shaft and. I miss. Yeah, I thought you were going to try to make that happen for yourself, and I didn't want to break the news to you. Can I can I grab for the rope still before I'm, while I'm falling? Sure, you can grasp at whatever straws you'd like. <laughs> With a failed roll, Professor Wilkinson does try to push off the wall to jump toward the lip of the opening. As he does this, he sees a figure silhouetted against the moon. The looming shadow is reaching for you, Professor. You just know that it's it's reaching out to squeeze your neck. So you falter. Your foot slips and loosens the dirt. Now realizing that you're going to fall, you make one last reach toward that opening and the shadow, but find only air. Oh my god, the shadow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Professor Wilkinson falls backward, clawing at the rock and dirt, trying to stabilize himself in any way that he can. And as the last person out, Professor, you brought Jeremiah's pickaxe along and you're desperately trying to plant that into the wall. But a ghoul that's climbed up just below you clasps its taloned fingers around your ankle and pulls. This causes you, Professor, to lose your hold completely. Jeremiah, give me a luck roll. Uh, 85. <laughs> I feel like that's probably not going to cut it. And the Professor, he starts a free fall through the shaft, taking Jeremiah's pickaxe and that ghoul that grabbed him down with him. And his body and head are crunching against jutting rocks. The professor's falling body manages to take two more ghouls down with him. Hey, hey, can you toss that bracelet up here real quick? 
The professor and the ghouls crash into the pool below, and Johnny, you're left standing with your outstretched helping hand frozen in time. You see the moonlight casting a spotlight on the rippling water below, and Chuck, give me a sanity check for Johnny. Will do. Uh, that is, uh, <laughs> that's a 95, so that's gonna be a fail. Nice. <laughs> and you see dozens of shapes jumping into the pool after the professor. He comes up once for air with a garbled scream. And you swear, Johnny, that you're actually seeing your old partner, Jack. But how can that be Jack? And he's pulled back under the water, draped in frenzied shadows. He doesn't come up for air again. Chuck, go ahead and give me a D10 for Johnny's sanity loss. Uh, that's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny is his like drop down so he's laying down on the ground looking down in the hole and he's yelling out Jack Jack not again no okay now give me an intelligence check all right well that one actually was a 26 that's a hard success yeah uh, that's see you didn't want that <laughs> unfortunately Jay's absolutely right about that passing the intelligence check Johnny fully understands what he just witnessed and the gravity of this horrific situation pulls him into a bout of madness. Okay. I'm all too aware of what's going on. The bout of madness, I love this, is putting you into a screaming fit, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going just a little bit. <laughs> oh! ah! <laughs> Lance will walk over to Johnny and kind of pull him back from the the hole. No, ah, let go of me, Jack! No! Pull yourself together, Johnny. Ah! You gotta get yourself together. And for Lance, Johnny's pretty difficult to control right now, so he takes both of you down to the ground where he is now writhing around like he's on fire. No, ah, no, Jack! <laughs> Who the fuck is Jack? Are there podcast acting awards? <laughs> I think we should probably get away from the hole as quickly as possible. Well, if we want to get away quicker, I reckon Miss Ellie ought to be able to walk out of here with us. Can I roll for first aid on? Yeah, Jeremiah can attempt first aid right here, but I cannot overstate the sense of urgency that you should be feeling. Also, with the distraction of Johnny screaming, you're gonna need a hard success. Ah! Uh, I'm gonna slap Johnny in the face because I'm ah! tired of hearing him scream. Okay, <laughs> I, I like that. I'm picturing, like, the slapping championships. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, Jay. Absolutely. Give me a strength check for Lance, and I'll say this, Jay. If you roll an extreme success, you might knock him out. <laughs> uh, so I rolled a 14. Oops. And that's a hard success. That's going to be a hard slap, then. Hey, wait, can I dodge? You're having a screaming fit, so I don't think so. Huh. I'm not really into Johnny dodging things. No, I've noticed that dodge is just a thing Johnny's not allowed to do. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Lance is going to walk over there, grab him by the collar. Lance, I always like you the most! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta snap out of it, and he reaches back, and he just gives him a good smack on the jaw. Ah, no! Johnny, your head flies to the right, and you feel like your face was just attacked by bees. Not the beans. Bees. Bees? Beads? Beads? <laughs> Beads! Bees! <laughs> now I'm confused. <laughs> Bees. Beads. 
the slap uh-huh. is effective and snaps you out of your bout of madness, Johnny. I don't know if that's rule compliant, but I just want the screaming to stop. <laughs> How much damage did I take? Teacher, you forgot to give us homework. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Chuck. It's generous of you to remind me about damage that your character's going to take. Lance, give me a D2. Roll D4 for the damage, and we'll divide it by two. I rolled a two. Okay, just one point of damage, taking Johnny down to five. Johnny five. Still alive. Sweet. And then also, like, after I slap him, I'm going to say, snap out of it, snap out of it. Oh, well, um, sorry about that, Lance. I... Are you back with us? I don't know what came over me. And then I slap him back. There are a couple of (laughs) things. Did you say you want to slap him back? Yes, I said I slap him back. So can I dodge roll? Let's see. Yeah, of course. So let's see. (laughs) Oh, yeah, of course. (laughs) Fuck you. Uh, It's not going to be strength because this is he's aware of what's happening. It doesn't matter. It's not going to connect. It's the principle. (laughs) Give me a fighting brawl roll for Johnny. Fighting brawl. Okay, here's my 25 (laughs) percent. Uh. That's a 70. I don't even need your dodge roll for Lance because Johnny (laughs) rears back to slap you and throws his arm towards you, but completely whiffs. (laughs) (laughs) And I look at him and I say, that was a warning. (laughs) (laughs) That played out much faster in game time than it did for us. But Wes, if you still want to try first aid on Ellie, You'll just need a regular success now since Johnny is quieter, but y'all need to hurry. Can we all apply first aid at the same time to Ellie to speed up the first aid process? Yeah, like Captain Planet. No, I don't think so. Jeremiah has a really good shot with a regular success. And hopefully something better than a salve-soaked bandana this time. (laughs) Are you sitting there from your goddamn ivory elitist tower and questioning my methods? I believe I have a proven track record of first aid in this group, do I not? You don't like myself and bandana, you can shove it up your pretentious ass. I want to know why you guys are pronouncing the L in Sav. I also would like to know that, but I wasn't going to say anything. (laughs) I did it in character. I'm from Delaware, okay? (laughs) (laughs) And that's how they pronounce it in Delaware? Is that what you're suggesting? (laughs) Salv. You're goddamn right they do. You can't get to salvation without salve. Amen. (laughs) I break out the book, You Have a Body, and I turn to Concussive Symptoms of the Body. That's chapter 7, section 4. Okay, I'm assuming you break this out in memory since Jeremiah doesn't carry the physical book with him. And uh, I realize that she's unconscious, so I... uh, put my fingers on her temple and do a simple (laughs) chant that I learned in the mines of Idaho back nigh 20 years ago. Okay, how's the chant go? (laughs) You want to know how the chant goes? Mm Mm-hmm. I think we all want to know that. Before Jeremiah begins the chant, Father Flint, give me a listen roll. I'm a 19, so I'm successful. You hear movement coming from down in that opening, deep in the ground, scratching and breathing sounds. All right, guys, uh, I can hear whatever is down there coming up here. So whatever we're doing, we need to hurry the hell up. Hump it, X. Y. O. U. W. A. K. E. U. P. Hey, you wake up, gig em. Hey, whoop. That doesn't wake up somebody from Ole Miss. <laughs> you got to do the hotty toddy, I think. Hotty toddy, gosh almighty. <laughs> Get the fuck up. Get the fuck up. <laughs> Wes, give me that first aid roll for Jeremiah. All right. I rolled a 13. That's extreme success. I, I told you I'm real good at this. Jeremiah, you've restored one hit point for Ellie, but it's an extreme hit point. This this is a hell of a hit point. <laughs> one of the best hit points of all time. Yes. People are talking about this hit point and they're saying good things. <laughs> Ellie, you open your eyes. 
and you see Johnny, Lance, Father Flint, and Jeremiah, but they're cloaked in darkness except for a distant mist. And Ellie, you shift your eyes to your right and see you. Kneeling over your body, this version of you looks mortified. You purse your lips to speak, to say... What happened? But before you can get the words out of your mouth... (laughs) You feel a jolt like you've been startled awake from a long, almost infinite nightmare. And you blink your eyes a few times and realize it's Jeremiah kneeling over you now. And you can still ask your question if you'd like. What happened? Right, so the supernatural beings may have knocked you down uh, (laughs) a cliff. Uh, You may have been cut up a little bit. Uh, We may have firebombed our way out of a cave system, uh, repelled you up the cliff, uh, threw a waterfall. It's a wild scene. But uh, basically now we need to get the fuck out of here because those things are fucking coming. Yeah, Sheriff, uh, I I agree with Lance. If you want the nitty gritty details, you can just listen to episode five. But I think we ought to get rolling. (laughs) Oh, oh, basically all that shit did happen. As Ellie hears and processes this information, Lance's account of what happened, she starts to remember the attack. And now I'd like you to give me a sanity check, Alex, for Ellie. It's a double zero and a five. I always forget what the double zero does. I'm terrible at this. Whoa, that's really good. Yeah, Yeah, you rolled a five. You're good. You're like, oh, that's fine. A monster broke through an opening, (laughs) clawed me and pushed me (laughs) off a 30 foot cliff. Cool. It's cool. I'm at peace. It's all right. Cool, cool, cool. You've apparently experienced plenty of things like this before. I went to Ole Miss. Of course I did. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to take three sanity points for this trauma. This was a potentially huge loss mitigated by a great role. Fine. And now... Wait, where's Professor Wilkerson? He, uh... uh, The professor, he... He fell back in trying to save you. Well, that's good. Yeah, he <laughs> lost my pickaxe. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. Well, remember the last time when I was conscious <laughs> months ago? Wasn't he sort of getting on my nerves? Oh, yeah. You're glad he's dead. That's what you're saying. I wouldn't say glad. I'm neutral about it. You're happy he's dead. Be happy he's dead. He lost my pickaxe. <laughs> That's a shame. (laughs) I'm thrilled he's dead. No use crying over spill professors. I think we ought to get going. Yeah, we should run. You've removed the the gladiator helmet you were wearing on your head as well. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot we put that on her. (laughs) And as you think about fleeing, you all look around and find yourselves near the bottom of the mountains near Baylor Peak. You might remember that you rode up that mountain to a ridge before Professor Wilkinson found a little ravine with the rock and the hole that you entered. If you want to get back to your animals and Sam, that boy who's been waiting on you, you're going <laughs> to... Right. Oh, Sam. Fucking Sam, man. <laughs> y'all, it, y'all, it's very important to me that we go save Sam. Guys, I felt a real connection with Sam. Who, Sean? Who is this? Cup, can we see that ridge, like, get an idea of where on the mountain we are? No, you're not really seeing it. You see a half moon, uh, but it's as you know, it's extremely difficult to navigate by the moon. Sure, as I know. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> create its own light, so you're not expert. None of you are expert enough to use the moon to navigate, and it's not a particularly starry night. So you know that you have to go up, but really, if you want to know the direction you're going to have to probably rely on Father Flint, Uh-oh. who kept a detailed map of how you worked through that cave system. And if he did a good job with that, you can probably estimate where you need to be going. 
based on the inside of the cave below us? Yeah, exactly. So you moved underground in a bunch of different directions. Uh, but if you kind of uh, can get your bearings, you can figure out approximately where you need to be going. Hey, Father, I know you've been keeping a pretty accurate map. You right. Can you uh, give me an idea of exactly, probably to the meter, exactly how far we need to go in which direction? <laughs> yeah, I, I have some good news and some bad news. Good news is yes. Um, I <laughs> yes, was the one Father, was... please tell me about the good news. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so good news is uh, we are all saved in the eyes of our Lord. Uh, the bad news is my map is fucking worthless. So. Well, don't be a pessimist. Let's find out. Brandon, give me a navigate roll. Okay. <laughs> uh, for navigate, I am 10. Yeah, I'm just normal. Hey, uh, hey Father, I, I got a knack for, for figuring out where things are. Can I take a look at your map? Maybe we can suss it out. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, if you want to help me, I guess they could help me roll. Yeah, you can't use Johnny's navigate score on this, but I will give you a bonus die since he's helping you. But you need to be accountable for this map that the professor asked you to keep. Okay, I rolled a 20 and a 40. Okay, and what's your singles dice? Roll another d10. A three. Okay, so your better number's 23. So you can use 13 luck or you can just be wrong. <laughs> leave it to chance. I mean, I'm not I've I have 41 luck, so let's use 13 of that. Okay, you kept a decent map, but it's very disorienting and you're in a big hurry, so Johnny can't figure it out either. But lucky for the two of you, you flip the map over and find that Professor Wilkinson had somehow gotten a hold of Flint's map <laughs> and he wrote down directions to the ridge. He'd been tracking this. And now you know that you need to go up the mountain and bear east to your right. Y'all are the only ones seeing this, so feel free to take credit for Wilkinson's work. <laughs> I now have this image of him and I sitting there with like a compass and a protractor out while the rest of the group is being eaten by ghouls. <laughs> like right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's not too far off, frankly, <laughs> but this did happen faster than it seems, and it was necessary work, I'd say. Y'all, uh, I, th I think me and Father figured out uh, our horses are back this way. I think we ought to get to getting. Yeah, yeah, I I'm with you. If you're running, everyone give me a constitution roll. This is a test of your physical condition and endurance in trying to run up this mountain. Depending on what you roll, this could affect your move rate during the next sequence. And Ellie, since you have a concussion and other wounds and you just woke up, I'm going to assess a penalty of negative two to your move rate on top of whatever you roll here. Okay. I rolled a 54, which is just barely a success. Yes, it is. Good. I rolled a 12. Wow. Okay. I got a 23. That's a hard success. Everyone's hard successing here. Let me break. Let me break it up. Let me break it up. <laughs> You're the one who needs it more than anyone else, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I got a 32. Oh, that's good. Is it? It's a success. In this instance, regular success and hard success give you the same result, which is no change to your move rate. Uh, well, I rolled a 94, so... That is a fail, so deduct one point from Lance's move rate. I'm going to roll for the ghouls to see how they do. Ooh, they failed their constitution roll, and this is going to help you quite a bit as they are probably going to be chasing you. So after the rolls, the ghouls are as fast as Johnny and Lance, but none of you can break away and flat outrun them, so everybody is involved in this chase. Throughout the chase, the fast group gets three actions per turn. With an action, you can run, you can navigate a barrier, you can set a trap, you can aim your weapon, or you can use your weapon, and so can the ghouls. You can run multiple times if that seems like a smarter option. Jeremiah, you're a hair slower than that fast group, and you'll get two actions per turn. Ellie and Father Flint, bringing up the rear for everyone, the, the slowest, you'll get one action per turn. A chase is kind of like combat with its rounds, but I'll try to keep everything as simple as I can. 
your order of turn is determined by dexterity. So we'll go Johnny, then Lance, then Jeremiah, then Ellie, followed by the Ghoul Gang, and finally Father Flint, who will assuredly die during this chase. So with that, the chase is on. I could shoot somebody and leave them here. Well, (laughs) that is certainly an option. How far ahead of these ghouls are we? Yeah, good question. Based on what you saw, Johnny, and what Father Flint heard, the ghouls are down in that cave somewhere in that opening. And in Call of Cthulhu chase terms, assume they're starting about four run moves away from where you are now. And they're already on the way because they heard Johnny screaming throughout that cave system. Way to go, Johnny, you fucking piece of shit. God damn it, Johnny. Quick, let's get moving. Anybody here good with rope? I don't need your stupid fucking rope. <laughs> I- I'm not very good with rope. I'm not. All right, well, f- fuck it. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no medicine and no rope use in this party. Johnny finds the two nearest trees on either side of the direction we're going and wants to tie a tripwire. I love this. (laughs) I would like to tie this tripwire just behind Father Flint (laughs) so he can get moving while I'm doing this. Hey, Lance, you give me the give me a hand with the other end of this rope. Uh, how do you like what? What's your plan here? My plan is just to slow even one of them down. (laughs) All right, well, let's tie this thing up. All right, so I'm going to ask you both to give me a Let's do a trap roll. A trap roll? Oh, Jesus trap Christ. Queen. Yeah, and if, if either one of you succeeds, I'll let you do this. I'm going to get to rolling the dice. I rolled a 42. I rolled a 12. Okay. I'm going to luck that thing. Okay, so you're going to use two luck points to make this a success? Okay. Johnny is, I mean, this is as simple as this can get because he's in a hurry. So we are just doing a good old fashioned square knot on each end and he's going to pull it as tight as he can and just hope that in the dark, maybe they don't see it. Okay, you have no idea what you're doing, really, but lucky for you, these knots turn out to be quite strong. But you do need to use another action to go tie Lance's end off since he failed. That's fine. You know what? Just just go. Let me take care of that. So I've used two of my actions. I'm going to use the other one to run. Okay. All right, Lance, you failed at setting the trap, but Johnny sent you on your way, so you'll start the next round of the chase a little further along than him. I'm going to run. You start running, and you've caught up to Johnny. Hey, Johnny. (laughs) Yeah, what's up? Uh, You reckon we ought to run, or should I I take aim and shoot down that hill at him? I mean, I can't see jack shit, but maybe you can. I'm crap with a gun anyway. Would... would... Sight for me be an action, right? Aiming is an action. Oh, and then and then I'm done. You can aim, but you can't shoot in this first round. You know what? I will take aim. Okay, so you're with Johnny taking aim. Yeah, I like basically like covering. Okay, you're level with Johnny and you set your sights on the hole with your 45, just waiting for some activity. Okay. All right. And then uh, Ellie. Question. Could I hide? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Do the ghouls have a good sense of smell? You don't know. I would I would let you try to hide. I just feel like they're, they're faster than I am, so... Right. I'm trying to come up with something else. The ghouls aren't out of the hole yet, so if you're going to hide, now is the time when none of them can see you doing it. My concern is that successfully hiding could take you out of the action for a little while, and you've been dead for a couple of episodes. But if you want to, I'd let you try with a stealth roll. Okay. 21. All right. You're going to need to use a luck point to make that into a regular success. Yeah, I will. Okay, good. There are some rocks in this area, as I said before, and it looks like only one of them, though, is large enough to conceal a body. With a regular success, you can hide behind this rock, but the ghouls are going to have a chance to look for you with a spot hidden, and I just want you to be aware of that. That's fine. I live for danger. Okay. 
<laughs> so gl I'm real glad we saved her, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> the rock is just a little bit off the path that Johnny, Lance, and Jeremiah followed. So what would you like to do? I'm, I'm going to hide behind the rock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Father Flint sees you hide behind this rock, and Jeremiah does too because he's taken aim at the opening, so they both see you. And Flint loves this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> now the ghouls are on the move, and Father Flint, before it's your turn to act, you see a thin, pale hand in the moonlight reaching out of that hole, breaking the surface. They've made it through the shaft and are now an imminent threat. Uh, Father Flint is fucking spooked, but loves Ellie's idea of hiding, knows that he won't last long in an actual sprint. Okay, Ellie took the good rock that was available to hide behind. Sorry. The biggest rock. You said that Ellie took the best rock, which means that there are other rocks. Yeah, they're they're pretty small and you're uh you're you're huge, remember? I'm you're, muscular, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're chiseled. But you are your size is sixty nine, which is nice. Uh, nice. <laughs> you did that on purpose. Yeah, that joke isn't helping me now. <laughs> He's a big fella. Father Flint is dressed in all black, so that might help a little bit. He's just gonna lay down. I'm just gonna roll around in the mud. How, how what is the what is the mud uh situation on this ground? It's very dry here in this vicinity. It's July in New Mexico. Remember the newspaper <laughs> talked about the heat wave? <laughs> this is the heat wave. <laughs> I, I love the idea of you ripping, ripping the white collar off so they don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that, too. That would be cool. But Flint is shirtless. You might remember. <laughs> oh, oh, no, he's glistening. They'll definitely see. It. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he left the collar on, though. <laughs> You're going to have to predator this thing and rub mud all over your naked body. Well, that's what I was asking for. Apparently there's no mud, though. Apparently it's just dirt. But I'd like to take whatever water drops are left and whatever canteen I still have on me and turn that into holy water to try to protect me at least somewhat from whatever devilish thing is coming after us. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. Can you be more specific about what you're doing? <laughs> I'm going to bless the holy water. I'm going to sprinkle it on my feet. <laughs> And I'm going to have my feet be as fast as the Lord will let it be. Is it sacrilegious for me to have you roll a cult to see how this does? <laughs> no. Wouldn't you roll religion? <laughs> There's, there is no religion. I think that's in the John Lennon song, right? It is. <laughs> it's too bad Gal Gadot's not here to start a sing-along. Or here, how about this, Cup? What if I bless the holy water and whatever water I have left in the canteen sprinkle it across the ground that the um, people are chasing us with. Okay. That way it maybe is a, another kind of block. Yes. You know, like if they're doing a rope block, yeah. I'll be doing a, a block with, with holy Hell water. Hell yeah. We're using all the canteen bombs we can find. Yeah. Give me a, <laughs> give me an arts and crafts roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> See if this blessing does anything. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, 75. Okay. You're, you're gluing macaroni to paper. <laughs> You've poured some water on the ground and now cool. you have one, uh, well, technically that should be your action, but since it was so fruitless, I'm still going to let you run a little bit. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You've seen one ghoul starting to poke out and you're now caught up to Johnny and Jeremiah. Right. And it's, it's back to Johnny. Uh, Johnny is going to do a triple run. Well, let me slow you down a little bit here. So oh, cool. Cool. Let me guess. I can't dodge. Johnny, you start running. And as you make your way further up the mountain, you encounter some dense brush and there's no way around it. The only reasonable way to go for you is through it. But it's very prickly. It might be juniper. And there's definitely cacti in there as well. This is extremely difficult to run through. You're going to have to go slowly. It's almost like you're swimming through cactus needles. Give me a strength check to see how Johnny does with this. That's a 19. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a regular success. I'm not very strong. <laughs> Great. And Johnny is able to wade through this brush effectively. It's quite painful, but he's not taking any further damage. 
and makes his way all the way to the next location, which is thankfully a clearing. How, uh, how, how dry is this brush? Cool. Well, I'm going to continue as far clear of the brush that Lance is clearly about to set on fire as I can get. Yeah, all good. You've cleared the brush. Now it's Lance's turn again. If I use two rolls, will I get clear or two two runs? Do I get clear of the brush? You're near the edge of the brush, so your first action would be the strength check if you're going forward. I rolled a 35, which is a success, I'm pretty sure. Let me check. Yeah, that's a success for you. You see Johnny up ahead and you have two more actions to perform. I want to see if I can toss a match into that mass of brush. I love that no one else has gotten through it yet. (laughs) Okay. Well, Ellie's hiding. (laughs) I'm hiding. Father Flint ain't going to make it. I'm making it. I'm making it. (laughs) And Jeremiah is aiming his weapon. (laughs) Wait, Jeremiah's not through either. Hey, guys, I I guess we're all going to die this episode. (laughs) So uh, let's go out hardcore. (laughs) Okay, uh, so I'm going to use my second move to ask Johnny for the matches. Okay, well, your second move can get you even with Johnny. Okay, my second move gets me even with Johnny. Hey, Johnny, do you still have any of those matches left? Can I hand them to him or is that an action? Yeah, I'm okay with this exchange being Lance's action. He can't do anything with them in this turn, but you can hash this out with him. Sure, sure. Uh, Johnny Johnny hands... uh, the remaining matches to uh, Lance. Okay. He keeps one. He keeps one for himself. Yeah, of course. It's very Johnny. I slapped him back to sanity. He owes me. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Lance's handprint is still on Johnny's cheek. <laughs> I, I I start to hand you the box of matches and I pull one match out and I say, that's another warning. Okay. <laughs> So at the end of Lance's turn, he's standing one move away from the brush with a box of matches. And now it's going to be up to Jeremiah, who has his gun pointed at the cave opening. Yeah, what do I see? You see what Father Flint saw, a single ghoul coming out of that hole. But you're getting a pretty good look at the complete torso. So theoretically, if the ghoul gets shot and falls back down the hole, could that take out some of the ghouls that are climbing? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, hell yeah. So do I have a bead on his dome? The moon is shining directly over that hole, as you know. So you're seeing the head and upper body pretty well. Yeah, I want to liquefy his skull. Give me a handgun roll. And I rolled a, oh shit, 66. Okay, for you, that's a regular success. Wow, you are good at guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a 70 for handguns. They call him Mr. Femur. Hell. Yeah. With a regular success, you're not going to be able to make the headshot you were aiming for, but the bullet explodes through its left arm, and you see it slip back down into that hole with what you think is a bad wound. Reckon I want to use this next action to, to keep aim on the hole. Okay, so you're going to re-aim your gun? Yes, sir. Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think that's fair because Jeremiah doesn't know about the matches. Right. I'm picturing Lance sitting there, like, looking at at Jeremiah and then looking at the match back and forth, like, weighing his options. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right, so Jeremiah, you don't move any further. Um, Not not to the brush yet. You just keep your aim, and then it's going to be... Ellie's turn. Ellie, you're hiding behind the rock. Is there anything you'd like to do? Probably just stay hiding. (laughs) Stay hiding. (laughs) I'm just going to, I'm going to (laughs) chill. See, you got too comfortable being out of the game. (laughs) I know. (laughs) It's your default state now. (laughs) Ellie's going to take a little nap now. Yeah. Yeah. I've been through a lot. All right. So, so what, what you see, Father Flint, Two ghouls spring from the hole, and one more is working its way out. They look pissed, and you see a limp ghoul's body thrown from the hole. It's covered in blood and fresh wounds, and and more than just a gunshot wound, it's like roadkill that's been nibbled on a bit. How are you going to use your action? One run. 
you run and you've left Jeremiah behind you now. Thank you. Okay, so it's Johnny's turn. Yep. And Johnny is even, well, no, he's even with Lance, right? Yes. Johnny would like to look ahead and make sure that now that he's in the lead, he's not running into a whole new horrible situation alone. Give me a, give me a spot hidden. And that one is a 74, which Ooh. is a success, I think. What is my spot hidden? You're like 82 now. It's at 85, so that's a success. You don't see anything at first, but you take a few more steps and narrow your eyes. Your <laughs> bat vision kicks in and you can make out the outline of a ridge. And you think you see a tiny flicker of light? You're not sure, but this feels right. Okay, but that could be, what's his name, Sam? Could be. Or it could be my impending doom. Could be. Uh, Johnny yells out, hey, uh, hey Lance, I, s- I think I see that ridge up ahead. I, I think uh, I think Eric's up there. And I am going to use my two remaining moves to run. Johnny runs twice, and he's now up against some uneven difficult terrain here. This is a rock scramble which is a choke point on the mountain. Johnny's not a skilled enough climber to go around this. And I'm at kind of the base of that. Yeah, you're at the base and you'd have to work your way through this pretty slowly on your next turn. Okay, cool. Rock Scramble is my favorite uh, Austin music festival. Mm-hmm. It's, it's my favorite Denny's dish as well. <laughs> and at Denny's, it is just a skillet full of rocks. <laughs> now it's Lance's turn. Jay? I want to just walk up close, or I guess run up close to the brush. Okay, Lance backtracks to the edge of the brush? Uh, Just kind of close to it, yeah. I don't want to be in the brush, but I want to yeah, be yeah. close to it. That's fine. So you go backwards, and you are now on the edge of the brush. Uh, Where is Ellie in relation to me? Ellie is across the brush and three more moves away. You can see her a little bit because she's on the side of the rock you're facing. So I think at this point, I don't really want to do anything other than get my pistol out. Where are the ghouls now? There are three ghouls outside the hole now, and others are peeking out. Okay, so... Can I fire one shot at the ghouls just to kind of get their attention? And maybe hit one? You're pretty <laughs> far away. You're far. You want me? <laughs> Can I please hit one? No, you're uh, you're a little farther than Jeremiah. I mean, my handgun skill is pretty damn good. Yeah, it is. You're, you're a little farther away, though, so I'm going to need a, a hard success. Which I only need a 33 for. I would like to take aim at the horde. Of three ghouls, I guess. <laughs> okay, that's one action. And then you're going to fire a shot with your last action? That's correct. Give me a give me a handgun roll. And I rolled a seven. Damn. <laughs> Holy shit, that is extreme success. Wow. You're going to do max damage here. I level up my pistol. Take aim at the trio of these fuckers. You fire one of those 32s and hit the foremost ghoul in the left eye. I thought there was only three. God damn it. (laughs) I was thinking the same thing. (laughs) I hate everybody. Uh, (laughs) The bullet bursts through the back of its skull and hits another ghoul in its neck. There's a lot of uh, demon mist in the air. And brains. And you think those two ghouls are both dead. Unfortunately, those ghouls are just pushed aside quickly and the ghouls are still coming. This is like an angry ant mound erupting. We've got we've got kind of a World War Z going on. Fun. You're slowing them down because only one can get through the opening at a time and you're shooting some of them, but they're still coming. And it is Jeremiah's turn. Johnny yells out, Hey, Jeremiah, uh, ain't enough guns in the world. Time to get moving. That ain't my family motto. 
All right. So I'm aiming still, though, right? You had taken aim as your last move. Okay, and you're saying about like, like 100 now or what? What are we looking at? You don't know the count, but you do know that as ghouls are being maimed, they're quickly tossed aside and replaced by new ghouls. You're only seeing a handful of them right now. I look down my barrel and the, the sight begins to tremble as I realize the magnitude of ghoul that is approaching. And I turn <laughs> tail and run, run. <laughs> <laughs> you turn and run as far as you can, realizing that you're dealing with a bunch of enraged ghouls. Between Johnny bombing some of them with a canteen and you destroying their favorite cave painting, they're motivated. Uh, at least it's taking them a while to get moving. Reckon we pissed them off. You run and come up against a thick brush of prickly juniper and other dangerous plants. This is the Southwest United States version of trying to make your way through dense jungle with a machete. But of course, you don't have anything that can cut and you even lost your pickaxe. Just a reminder. If you want to go through it, Wes, I need a strength check for Jeremiah. Rolled 11. Wow. What was it? 11. 11. Okay. <laughs> that's a 1-1. One, one. I'm on a fucking roll today. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's an extreme success for you. Rawr. <laughs> you hardly even notice that this is prickly brush, Jeremiah. Uh, 99% of my epidermis is calloused. <laughs> <laughs> Flint is built like Moses from the Ten Commandments, but... <laughs> Jeremiah, you're standing there parting the red brush and effortlessly glide between the prickly plants. You get to the other side unscathed. That felt good. <laughs> you still have another action. Uh, yeah, I want to do one of those dances from Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> you can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind uh, or you can move forward a little bit. I think I'm going to move up to the clearing with Johnny. Well, Johnny's all the way up at the rock scramble, but you do blow by Lance and go there by yourself. And <laughs> now it's Ellie's turn. Why are you laughing already? Uh, just because you're still like sitting behind a rock. I'm hiding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not just sitting <laughs> hiding. Sorry, that's true. And you still have an action you can use. I mean, am I in any sort of immediate danger? Well, sure you are, because there are ghouls. There's a horde of ghouls. We're all in immediate danger. <laughs> what I mean is, 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 am I in danger of being spotted? Probably on their next turn. Whenever all the ghouls get out, she's going to just slowly creep around to the other side of the rock. So here's my question. I do want to try to sneak away, but I don't want to do that right now. Alex, why don't you give me a spot hidden to see if there is potentially a place to hide that's a little bit less conspicuous. Okay. 29. Mm. You look off to your left and you're not 100% sure, but you see a rock canopy. It's not large enough to hide behind, but it seems like it might just be covering another hole in the ground. You're not sure if this has potential for hiding or if it just drops down into another horde of angry ghouls <laughs> and you will be in plain sight if you decide to go check it out. Um, can I just stay put? Yeah, you just know about it now. That's that's fine. OK, OK. So with that, you stay put. I mean, you could try to fast talk some ghouls, but I think they would spot you <laughs> uh, at that point. The ghouls are up and they use their first action to clear the opening of any corpses and maybe nibble on those a little bit, getting some energy like a protein snack. There are four ghouls now on the ground and with their next action, they run and they encounter Johnny's trip line. Yeah, they do. They jump over that easily. What? Let me see that dice roll. No, wait, they're, ru they're running so fast it cuts them in half. They have excellent vision in the dark, so they aren't stumbling over the rope. But they don't have to roll jump. They don't have to roll jump? Yeah, but it does cost them an action to jump over the line. Okay. They run up a little more, and they're just behind you, Father Flint, but they can't attack in this round because they're out of actions. <laughs> there we go. Great. You're welcome, Father. 
Father Flint, it's your turn and you can try to attack the ghouls somehow or try to run up to the edge of the brush. You're free to try something else as well. Well, then I think I mean, I think the only thing I really have to do is try to get to the brush itself. Okay, Father Flint, you lumber with your big, hot body (laughs) toward the brush (laughs) and you get to the edge of it. You see Lance and his smoking pistol on the other side. Yeah. Hey, what's up? (laughs) All right. And then we moved uh, moved to Johnny, who is at the rock scramble. I want to start making my way up the rock scramble, because if anybody else makes it, maybe I can help them up. Chuck, give me a dexterity check to see how Johnny does with the rock scramble. Uh, It's a 63. My dexterity is 70. So that's a success. Okay, good. This rock scramble, it goes up. It is difficult. It is jagged. There's questionable footing. Johnny, you use the tip of your foot in the wedges. You roll your ankle a couple of times. You fall down several times, but without sustaining damage. Good thing. (laughs) Yeah, thank God for that. Johnny makes it to the top of this tricky, rocky terrain. Slow and steady. Does Johnny have any rope? Uh, Yeah, you have some. I would like to take one turn to tie some rope to a nice sturdy rock and then toss the loose end down the rock scramble. Okay. To in order to aid my compatriots in climbing. The event that they arrive. Yeah. Yeah. Should should they arrive? I'm going to make it easier for them. Okay. I, I like that. Okay. And what is in front of me? Uh, So in front of you, you can see the ridge a little more clearly now. Gosh, you can probably make it to that ridge. I'm going to take one more move towards the ridge. And I'm going to yell out to Sam for help. Okay, and you'll be out of actions after this. That's fine. I'm going to yell out, Sam, bring the horses and the guns. Get down here now. Johnny yells for Sam, and while you don't get any verbal response, you do see that flickering light you made out earlier moving wildly now. I'm on my way to save you, bro. You were always my favorite, Johnny. You think it might be someone running with a lantern. Okay. Lance, it's your turn, and you're looking back at the brush. You see Father Flint pretty clearly on the other side. Hello. Hey. (laughs) You really can't see Ellie anymore from here. She's kind of lost in the darkness. <laughs> how many how many turns would it take me for to get Father Flint out of there? Okay, so if you want to get Father Flint out of the brush. One turn there, one turn back? It would be one turn through the brush, one turn to c- collect the father, <laughs> and one turn back through the brush. So this is possible, but these are all skill checks you'd have to pass. Brandon, I think you're fucking dead, dude. Yeah. (laughs) I am going to run halfway into the brush. Jay, give me a strength roll to, like, get into the brush. Uh, So I got a 43, which is a regular success, I believe. A regular success. Lance, you are in the brush. Are you just stuck here? So I guess I'm going all the way through the brush. I mean, I've already rolled for it. Yep, that's fine with me. You can walk to the other edge where Father Flint and the ghouls are nearby. I basically, I'm going to try to pull Flint through with me. Okay, good. That was one action to wrangle the father. And now, Jay, give me a strength check to work your way back through the brush with the father in tow. This is pretty effortful, so I'm going to ask for a hard success. Yikes, I uh, (laughs) rolled a 78. Ouch. You know what, though? Roll a bonus die, because Father Flint isn't a statue, and he's going to be able to help you navigate this brush at least a little bit. (laughs) Uh, I rolled an 8. An 8? I thought you were going to say 98. You're dragging Flint through the brush, and the two of you make it to the other side without sustaining damage with that extreme success. You are on the friendly side for now. Okay, so I'm out of moves here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It was the holy water, really, that carried Flint through. Yeah. 
Flint, you see one set of footprints where Lance carried you. Lance is my lord. Now we have Jeremiah in the clearing. Can I yell back and see if they've gotten Ellie? You want to yell to Lance and Flint? Yeah, I want to mess with their conscience a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, boys, you guys grab Sheriff Ellie? Who? (laughs) We've done all we can for her. She decided to hide. So you know that she decided to hide. Okay, I'm okay with it, too. I'm going to run, run. (laughs) Hey, hey, Jeremiah, did they get the sheriff? No, they ain't got her. (laughs) Said she's hiding. All right, well. I respect her decision. (laughs) I agree that we should not assume that she needs help. I don't assume that one bitch. She's a sheriff. She obviously rose through the ranks of law enforcement due to the fact that she can kick some ass. I might cut that, but I do think it's important as Ellie hides to remind everyone that she's the strongest member of the group and can <laughs> kick ass if she wants to. If you cut that, I'll be so mad. I'll quit. <laughs> <laughs> now what, Jeremiah? You still have actions. I, I did my due diligence and now I'm run, run. Okay, so you're running... Uh, you, you get to the, the base of the rock scramble. Okay. Wow. You've stopped there. It's a rock scramble, huh? I get any hash browns with it? <laughs> it's Ellie's turn now, and she found a new hiding place, maybe, and is sitting behind a rock. All right, I'll draw my gun. Ooh, I like that. Get some defense ready. No ghouls have seen you yet but it's probably not safe for Ellie to go out in the open at the moment. Then I guess I'll stay put. Okay, Ellie is behind the rock with her 38 drawn and ready. It's the ghoul's turn next, and they're going to do a spot hidden check to see if there are any party members around on their side of the brush. Oh, and they've failed that check, so they're going to advance to the edge of the brush and work their way through it. Uh, Oh, actually, they failed again. They are not (laughs) working their way through, at least not easily. This is taking them a very long time. So at the end of their turn, they're still trying to get through this brush. This seems like unfamiliar terrain to them. And now it's Father Flint's turn. So, but can I take what we were going to use to set the brush on fire and use that on my turn now? I feel like there's no reason he couldn't do that. Yeah, just be specific about what you're doing. Oh, yeah, I think it's time uh, we did a little something about those ghouls back there. I mean, now that I'm on this side of the brush, I think it's time for you to use that lamp and those matches and let's do something about it. Yeah, the brush should go up quickly. The only thing I worry about is Ellie over there on the other side of Hoyden. Eh. I mean, because the other option we have is just getting through this brush, getting the horses and then going back and finding Ellie. I think I understand. If you're worried about trapping Ellie with the fire, just know that the brush is dry and will eventually burn out and be passable again. It's not permanent fire is what he's saying. (laughs) Yes, but what if I bless the fire then? (laughs) Yeah. Holy fire. (laughs) It's the burning bush. Right. (laughs) The brush ignites and goes up fast, and you feel the heat from that fire and smell the burning ghouls. They smell kind of sweet. But through the flames, you do see more ghouls pouring out of that hole now, and they're running toward the fire. The fire's going to last long enough that anyone on the side opposite the ghouls can advance all the way to the ridge where Johnny is standing without rolling on their next turns. Okay. Can't really do much at this point for Ellie, unfortunately. I guess the bright side is that you've been lighting fires and shooting guns, so you have definitely drawn attention. (laughs) All right. I think it's time to just fucking hightail it out of here and hope for the best. So you are all out of the chase for now. Except for Ellie. (laughs) Let's go to Ellie, who is still in the thick of things. Alex, Ellie watched four ghouls in front of her burn up in that fire set by Lance and Father Flint. And you see other ghouls pouring out from that opening, but they all seem distracted by the blaze. As far as you can tell, your group left you high and dry. (laughs) What would you like to do? 
Um, I think it's time for me to try to sneak away. Okay, let's do a contested roll since you're taking a big risk here. You're going to roll for stealth and I will roll for spot hidden again for the ghouls to see if they detect your movement. I'm going to do this with penalty die, though, because of the major distraction of the fire and your fleeing party members. Oh, hold on. Yikes. That doesn't sound good. Oh, no. <laughs> 140. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it can't be that bad unless you fumbled because I rolled 90. I got a 32. Okay, that's a fail fail. Well, actually, can I use my luck on this? Yeah, you can use luck. Yeah. It's a good decision. Okay. I can't think of many ways for you to not die without using luck here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was blunt. I like it. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm going to crawl in the little hole beneath the rock overhang. Okay, so you, yeah. I should be concealed that way, right? Yeah, you kind of settle into this depression. It takes you... Um, I, did, like, I did that for about two years. I mean, yeah. it only took me like a month, probably. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It's so easy to settle into depression. <laughs> Everyone just jumped in on it. Everyone was like, here it comes. Like, we're ready to make a depression joke. It was great. <laughs> but Ellie, you feel pretty safe for now, at least given the circumstances. Now, back on the ridge, Jeremiah, Lance, and Father Flint, you all climb the rope Johnny left at the rock scramble, and you see Johnny standing on a ridge, and you work your way over there before realizing Johnny has stopped because a boy you recognize as Sam has a rifle trained on him. Sam is trembling. He's afraid. Easy, Sam. Easy now. It's Johnny. It's your old friend, Johnny. You remember we were buds. What are you shooting at? What's <laughs> what were you shooting at? There's some things down there and we will explain it to you on the road, but we have got to get moving. <laughs> What's going on? Where's the professor? They're scary as shit. And the professor's dead. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sam, we don't we don't have time for this. We what, gotta go. What did you say? And he he points the rifle at Jeremiah, uh, takes it off of Johnny. What 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 did you just say about the professor? Jeremiah grabs the barrel of the gun like a microphone and puts it to his mouth and says, <laughs> <laughs> "No, <laughs> Jeremiah is not close enough to grab the gun right now." The professor's dead. <laughs> The professor's dead? You killed him? No, no, we didn't shoot him. That professor led us into a whole heap of trouble, and there's something after us, and we don't know what it is, but it's going to get all of us if we don't get moving. Sam, this is What did you say? Sam's grip on the gun tightens. He's dead, and he took my pickaxe with him. Are you deaf? No, Sam. 